All right, welcome to another edition of Friday Night Football. We are underway in PJP. Pope John Paul II decides to start the game off with a squib kick, which is quickly picked up by one of the up men. Ricky Neal, the big sophomore, falls on top of it. And they must have seen the film from last week or two weeks ago against Academy Park where they're successful with a squib kick against Interborough. But this time, Ricky Neal equal to the task, and this sets up Interborough with great field position at the 47-yard line. I'm Bill Soroka, back for a playoff edition of Friday Night Football. Nate Murthy, your quarterback, as he's been all season, he's going to pass on first down, looking for Connor Adams, who reaches up and grabs it. Great job by Connor Adams. Forward progress should be enough for a first down. Looks like they're not going to give him the first down, but they sure as heck should. And now they do, and they'll wind the clock. No, they won't. Second down in like half a yard after a terrible spot on the first play from scrimmage. Forte, the fullback. Chris Thomas, the running back. Chris Thomas on his feet inside the 35 to about the 33. And that will be a first down for the Bucks. I'm up here shooting the breeze with my good buddy Katie Maggs, and, and, and all of a sudden the game starts. So a little bit of an awkward beginning here. I'm Bill Soroka, as I think I might have mentioned, alongside Katie Maggs, the producer, director, videographer, photographer, color person. You name it, she wears many hats on these broadcasts. Kali Kuyate in motion. It goes to Thomas again. Thomas inside the 30 to the 25. Pope John Paul, the beneficiary of really what is a screwy playoff format. The PIAA uh, in District 1 has gone to... Uh, six different classifications going from single A all the way to six A and with this based on the size of the schools based on the size of the boys 10th 11th and 12th grade populations is the way they they work the classification and it just so happens that there aren't many schools that fall into that 4A classification so Interboro truthfully probably about two or three weeks into the season was safely into the playoffs with a 9-1 regular season record in the Del Valle Championship, they've earned the number one seed. Uh, the fourth and final seed, as only four teams made it in, in Group 4A, is this Pope John Paul II, who comes in with a losing record of, I believe, like four and six maybe, but they do have an impressive win over Pottsgrove, uh, who very well could be our opponent next week should the Bucks escape this game. First down, Bucks inside the 20 to the 19-yard line. So like 5A and 6A, I think each have 16 teams. So the playoff, um, the, the, the district one playoffs will go four weeks, whereas the final is next week. So whoever wins this game will play against the winner uh, of the Pottsgrove game for the district championship next week. And I believe that is a higher seed gets the home game matchup. So we very well could be right back here next week, hoping to hoist a district championship in which case it would be on to the state champion or state playoffs um, after that. So um, we'll see where mighty, mighty Imhotep could await. Mirtha, option, out to Thomas. Thomas finds a seam down the sideline close to the 10-yard line. That looked like he might have stepped out around the 13-yard line. That's where they appear to be marking the ball. Sparse crowd thus far. Um, it is a little bit of a chillier night. Game time temperature, 52 degrees. And also, I think the, the fact that everybody, you know, with a couple of brain cells rubbing together, thinks Interboro is going to win this game big. That could have something to do with it too. But anyway, you know, you, you could end up 
see in a competitive game, since it is a playoff game, Pope John Paul very well may come out fired up. Um, they're not a particularly big school either. Um, you know, they do have a losing record. But with that said, anything can happen in the playoffs. But Bucks got the ball to start the game, and they've marched down the field after the ill-fated onside kick attempt, or at least squib kick attempt. Ball drive started at the 47-yard line, and now they're down to the 13. Second down and about four and a half for Mirtha and the Bucks. Connor Adams, your wide receiver. Colin Raver at the tight end. Uh, the wing back is Kali Kuyate, so he's number 23. You'll see him line up sometimes as a wide receiver. Sometimes you'll see him come in motion. And we'll get the offensive line after this play. Thomas going to be brought down behind the line of scrimmage. Great job by Pope John Paul, interior line, to drive him back, and it'll be third down and long. Right after I compliment the offensive line. The center is Cameron Brooks. The tackles, Noah Nickel and McMillan. And then the guards are Frangeli and Obesame. And they've been receiving high marks all year from the local press about just how good of an offensive line they are. And they are. Chris Thomas leading rusher in Delaware County, and it's for good reason. Kuyate on the sweep. And Kuyate gets into the end zone for a touchdown. Great blocking along the sideline by Noah Nickel and Manny Obesame. Really opened up a huge hole for the speedy Kali Kuyate. And he's into the end zone for a touchdown from 14 yards out on the jet sweep. And the Buck student section, the Interboro Army, fresh off their school-sponsored tailgate. Great job by the athletic department, Mr. Barrett and Mr. Kloss, pulling that together. And the kids were real enthusiastic about it. Great things happening in the Interboro. A lot of positive behavior initiatives going on. The kids are really, you know, invested in trying to do the right thing. Colin Ravert drives it through. And immediately t-shirts begin flying into the crowd. And those awesome t-shirts I gave out today for the uh, Pride Buck winners. I think every kid wants to do the right thing now. So 7 nothing Bucks, 8.44 into the contest. 8.44 to go in the first quarter, so just 3 minutes and 16 seconds into the contest. And they'll kick off to Pope John Paul, who is really um, a pass-dominant team um, in looking at the defensive schematics that uh, Coach D'Esposito left on the copy machine earlier in the week. I noticed that the, about 75% of their play calling involves passes. So you expect to see them put the ball up in the air quite a bit. The Ravert will line it up at the 40. That looks like number two, C.J. McCaffrey, back deep, although the numbers are a little bit difficult to read at this, this dusk hour. And he'll be brought down at the 37, but there's a flag down on the field. So that'll be a hold on Pope John Paul II. So they'll get the ball at the 20-yard line. 
Quarterback for PJP is Matt De Laurentiis, a six foot, 375 pound tall drink of water. He's an 11th grader. And he's thought to be a, a, certainly an above average quarterback. And they'll put the ball up and they'll test that arm. Four wide receivers. And right off the bat, they'll throw it. And they'll get about seven on the play. And we'll try our darndest to get those numbers, and Ed Barrar can't get them either. And this time they'll run the ball and it'll be stuffed behind the line of scrimmage. Obesame with the stop. So third down and four. Three wide receivers to our end, one to the other end. They'll try and run it up the middle, and that doesn't fool anybody. And they'll have to drive them back, and the referee should probably blow the whistle. He does. They'll bring up fourth down and three, and we'll see what PJP wants to do. Try to spread out the Bucks and then go up the middle two plays in a row, and neither time was the interior line fooled. And they did a fantastic job. And Zizza and Quentin Frangelli with the stop. Back deep for the Bucks, Kuyate and Connor Adams. It's a three and out for Pope John Paul. And it's a high spiral. Kuyate puts a ball on the ground and I think he covers it up. It looks as if, and it is Interborough's ball. Kuyate made uh, really one of the biggest mistakes you can make as a punt returner. Uh, trying to field the ball going backwards with an over-the-shoulder catch. And that's really something that any special teams coach would advise you against um, you know, early on. Uh, you just don't do that. Let the ball, if it goes over your head, let it bounce and cut your losses. But fortunately, no harm done. Bucks with possession at the 33. And Murtha and the boys back at it. Forte, ahead for about two. They gave Forte about three up to the 36 yard line. Tight block and formation, and they go right back to Kuyate, and he'll get a first down up to the 45. Nice change of pace when they go with Kali Kuyate. With Forte and Thomas, you have guys who definitely have a little bit of speed, but they're more power backs. I mean, you know, Chris Thomas, for usually the, the fullback's bigger than the tailback, but in this case, Chris Thomas is just a big lumbering, you know, he looks like a football player, and he looks like a football player here as he goes right up the middle, and he may take it all the way to the house, and he does. Chris Thomas from 45 yards out, great lead block by Joe Forte, and the Bucks have two quick ones on the board. Tough to bring down. And the point I was trying to make there is that Chris Thomas is huge. And, you know, like, you couldn't really look any different than his younger brother, Eric, who's short and, you know, really built, no doubt. But his brother, Eric, a district champion wrestler for Interboro, but probably about six or seven inches shorter than Chris. 
you know, Chris got Chris got it all. Big, you know, big, tall kid, powerful, broad shoulders, and fast. I mean, he's you know absolutely prototypical football player. And where I was going with this was that Kali Kuyate is just the opposite. You know, he's short, he's fast, he slashes. He's not really a straight-ahead runner, and he provides a nice change of pace. And you saw it there. You know, Forte up the middle, Kuyate ahead for about 12 and then Thomas with the big home run ball, and it's 14-0 after the extra point by Raver. So six minutes and 23 seconds in, and that's two quick ones. Bucks band sounds good as always. A lot of great alumni coaches down there. I'm noticing um, three fantastic AP government students of mine. Uh, Sean Williams, Megan McCarthy, and Alex Kolesnik, all who are no doubt dominating in their respective colleges. Sean Williams, the brother of uh, drumline captain Kevin Williams. And we have the field commander Colin Conmey and drum majors Lauren Oster and Brennan Malloy. That, really some fantastic kids there. And speaking of fantastic human beings, Joe Barrett is here, assistant athletic director and one of the uh, people who put together that lovely tailgate earlier in the afternoon. Joe Barrett says, I haven't done enough today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and work the camera. And PJP fumbling around with the ball and Interbury is going to stop him at about the 14-yard line. So exactly what they didn't need going down 14 nothing early and then bad field position on top of it and is it possible after all this time I'm going to have someone to talk to up here oh boy well, let me move over and yield ladies and gentlemen oh he can't hear me well listen sometimes technical difficulties get in the way can you hear me? I can hear you, not necessarily through the machine, but I can hear you because I'm standing right next to you. So, Mr. Joe Barrett will join us up here high atop the South Avenue Sports Complex just in time for an overzealous Chris Thomas to jump off sides. It's an honor to be up here, Mrs. Soroka. Yeah, it's an honor to have you. Uh, it's, um, you know, bu busy day for you, for sure. Besides dominating in the classroom, as, as you always do. As usual. Put together the <laughs> tailgate. Uh, the first ever pride buck drawing was today. Yes. So congrats to the winners. Um, those yep. shirts were sweet, man. Yep, and once again, the, the Bucks, Buck student section did, this, did themselves proud uh, by showing up at the tailgate, marching over, and now they're so far so good. I heard over 100 tickets sold for that yes. event. Yep, it was awesome. And what a, that's a great deal as the – Pass goes outside on a wide receiver screen to C.J. McCaffrey, and he gets to the 23, close to first down yardage. He must have stepped out at the 22, so it'll be second down and one after the penalty and the wide receiver screen. And it was a great deal. I was telling the kids, trying to explain basic economics. You know, $5 ticket, and then plus they were given a, uh, with the deal for $8. They got a ticket, a hamburger, a hot dog, and a, and a soft drink. So that's a good deal. Yeah, and, uh, and the hamburgers prepared by our very own principal, Mr. Johnston, were No doubt. Quite did he delicious. wear an apron? Uh, uh, no, he did not. Um, however, he does smell like he's on fire because uh, we did <laughs> use the old school charcoal charcoal grill uh, and if you're lucky enough maybe Miss Malnich uh, served you. Well uh, she just, said she, the she first thing out. she said when she came up here is pardon me I smell like meat uh, so I you know I don't smell I don't think she smells like meat but hey listen As our own Mr. Conti down there showed up even with the bum wheel that he's got going on. Absolutely. And, you know, Mr. Conti is, uh, we're happy to have him for sure. 
And how about this is 26 years for our PA announcer, Ed Barrar. And, and you know, you couldn't find a guy. And, and I was talking to him one day, probably like the first day I ever did this job. And we were just, you know, we were chatting down there. And he says, yeah, he, he started as a senior in high school. And it just was like his job. And he's, he never stopped doing it. Yeah. yeah and he All does through it for college. Free. and oh, Yep. He's a complete volunteer. He doesn't get paid for it. Um, shows up about 15 minutes before kickoff. And away he goes. Yes. But he, he makes it to the, you know, the, like the, the dinner before the Ridley game. Yep. Um, the, I guess I imagine now defunct Ridley game. Who knows, though? And then the, the Bucks banquet at the end of the year. So he's very much a part of this team. And this time, I think the left tackle moved. Manny Obese may always want to point in someone else's direction when trouble is uh, near. So it'll be second down and seven. You see down there, the uh, magnets being sold. I thought that was going to be our gig. But it looks I like thought it was going to be our gig too, but you know what? They can have it. The, so the senior class sponsors bogarted our idea of selling these lovely Bucks magnets. <laughs> Big Wern and Miss Sauls down there selling the, um, the magnets. Little screen, Sit him and a great job by Raver to stop him. Fresh off his nap during government class today, feeling refreshed, and he takes him down to 20. Well, as I said, Mr. Soroka, I like seeing those magnets because it went basically from my brain to that magnet. So I'm, I'm really, I'm really excited about that. And that, um, those, uh, that's the new logo. That's it which some people believe you unilaterally force-fed down the throats of the Interborough community, but uh, we know better. They went through several drafts, yes. several different... Um, you know, many, so many current and former uh, Interborough alums. Had have, some uh, input. Yeah, yes. It's a nice logo. Outside pressure from Obesime, pass over the middle. And a great job by That's Kuyate, who thus far has really been the MVP of this game. Jake Bildstein was the intended receiver, and Kuyate just a little push up high. I don't think he hit him as hard as it looked, but he was off balance, and he fell down flat. So it'll be fourth down, and with 3.21 to go in the first quarter, Bucks are going to get it back. And it's another high end over end punt. And they're going to oh, run God. the reverse to Kuyate. Adams Turn to Kuyate. And if he can stay in bounds, it's going to be a block in the back on Obesame, I think. Oh, there it is. Right idea. Manny's just a big kid. And I think he's like, sometimes doesn't know his own strength. And he really leveled number 35 from behind. That's Sean Brennan, who's stumbling off the field right now. But it's going to cost the Bucks 10 yards. But nonetheless, still good field position for Interboro, as they'll have it around the 40-yard line. We'll call it the 39. And Nate Murtha and the Bucks offense will be ready to rock and roll. Mainly the ground game has been effective thus far. Um, only one pass thrown to Connor Adams. Otherwise, it's been on the ground. And it goes to Forte right up the gut. And another flag on the play from about 40 yards away by the back judge. I don't know what he saw there. We'll have to wait on the call. The thing is, with playoff games, you get crews from all over the place. So this isn't your standard brand of, like, local officials. These guys could be from Lord knows where. And they call it a hold. And again, that flag came from the 10-yard line. I don't know who it was on. And quite frankly, the play was so quickly moving. I don't know how they would have had time to, to 
kickoff flag. It's a fullback dive up the middle. But they don't announce the player's number out loud via the loudspeaker, so I don't know who it was on. So in fairness to the back judge who threw the flag from 40 yards away, maybe somebody did hold. 43-yard line, the line of scrimmage. Also holding a spot foul, so not nearly as big a, a hit here. First and 15. Thomas up near the original line of scrimmage. Well, scores from around the county, in case people aren't paying attention. Academy Park is beating Radnor 8-0. Ridley is already winning 14-0. Good, good. And Springfield is winning 21-0 against Pencrest. Who got into the playoffs at 3-7. and seven. Got into the playoffs. Pencrest. Pencrest, yes. 3-7, yes. Well, and seven, they well, got in the playoffs. Obviously, you can see what a difficult time Springfield's having with them. Yes. Murtha got him. finds Kuyate. First down and then some. And so he's turned into a really good player. And I was just going to say, you know, last year, one of the coaches told me on the first day, watch out for this kid. He was a sophomore, just starting on defense, didn't get a lot of offensive reps. But this year, just within the last couple of games, you've really seen him thrown in on offense a lot more often. And, and, on, to and on top of that, he's a great kid to boot. Yes, very likable young man. 23-yard line. Thomas bounces off tackle down to the 20. I'm just hoping something exciting happens, so maybe I can be on USA Today Radio uh, like uh, yours truly. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. The, the, and that's the thing that I was trying to explain to people is that you know a lot of the games especially like the non-league games and some of the games against weaker division opponents they're they're not that exciting but that academy park game was top three or four in all the years i've been doing these broadcasts and you know i was just happy i was happy for coach lennox i was happy for interboro as a whole it just you know sometimes you go through streaks where the ball bounces your way a lot, and that's just, it feels like that's what's been happening at Interboro since September. Yep. Like the, you know, great Keystone scores, you know, the school performance profile went up. Um, it, it seems like people are happy around the building, at least most of us. Yep. You know, there's it, it, administrative harmony. We're just, we're doing good. It's got him. Murtha sees Ravert, and he might have he caught, caught it. Yeah, he did. He did caught, catch it. Let's get the touchdown side, and it is. A touchdown uh, for a Colin Raver. And play. my gosh. Talk about a carbon copy of a couple weeks ago with Beckwith. The ball hit off the defender. It was slightly underthrown by Murtha, and great concentration by Ravert. And that's the second time that play has worked with Ravert. A little bit underthrown, but great. Great concentration by Raver. So 24.8 seconds to go in the quarter, and the Bucks have a 20-0 lead. And I guess, you know, with at, and certainly we're not one to let count our chickens or anything, but um, I received I thought I knew this the other day, but I received a tweet from Coach Coffey, who's three people down to my right here, and and he was telling me that tonight, should the Bucks win, this will be Coach Lennox's 300th total win. Wow. Three Counting Delaware. Yeah. Counting Interboro. That's impressive. This would be, so he had, last year it was 200, but it was 200 yes. for Interboro. Here, yes. And, you know, he didn't get 100 wins in one year. Um, he, the, the, if you stack up his that, Interboro that'd wins, that would be pretty awesome. It right? would be pretty awesome. <laughs> but it's it's funny because as I told the kids on Thursday morning, I'm now convinced more than ever that anything can happen because the Cubs won the World Series. Yes. Because yeah, growing right. up, wasn't the, the, the joke was always like, yeah, you know, I mean, every girl I ever asked out was always like, yeah, I'll go out with you when the Cubs win the World Series. 
Well, the greatest and, thing that I heard is uh, somebody said that the Cubs winning the World Series is better than sliced bread because the last time they won the World Series, there was no sliced bread. Yeah. So there was also no sense. NBA, no NHL, yes. no NFL. Like there was no Super Bowl. Yeah. You know, a lot of women couldn't vote yet. The like, Titanic wasn't made, so it, <laughs> it wasn't able to not to be unsinkable to sink. Yes. <laughs> if, like, that, if that makes sense. But I, I, I'm happy for the folks in, in Chicago and all the Cub fans around the country. It was, it was good to see. And honestly, I would have been just as happy if Cleveland would have won because, you know, there's a city that's – I feel like they're always like the red-headed stepchild of, of like, sports, the oh, sports well, I world. Think, I think we can understand that as Philadelphia fans, yes. unfortunately. Yeah, but at least, like, we had the Liberty Bell. And yes. Yeah, yes. like, we're still a pretty cool city. Yeah. You know, the art museum and Rocky and... Uh, yeah, and, we are, and, yeah, the fifth it, biggest city our, still. Our teams may not win a lot of championships, but we're still pretty cool. Yep. Like, Cleveland's still Cleveland. <laughs> and the only time I've ever been to Cleveland was before the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame was put there, so I haven't even gotten a chance to go see that, which I would I like to really see at some Although, point. Although, like we said, I hear the heart of rock and roll is in Cleveland. <laughs> From what I hear, it's not, it's not every day you get to use a Huey Lewis, yeah. ref, Huey Lewis reference. Didn't you see Huey Lewis in concert over the summer? Yes, of That's course. That's phenomenal. Come on. That's phenomenal. 16.5 seconds left. PJP, first and 10 from the 35. And De Laurentiis has a lot of work to do. They'll screen it out to number 21. That's A.J. Natal, and he gets next to nothing, and that'll be the last play of quarter number one. And I wonder, was this school called something else before, or are they relatively new? Uh, I think there were two Catholic schools combined. Okay. Uh, which ones, I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, and, and I ask this question only because, you know, Pope John Paul II's only been – deceased for about 10 years. Yes, I, so, I yes. can't imagine they named the school after Pope John Paul II when he was still around. No. And, you know, I got a lot of love for Pope John Paul II being uh, Polish. as the only Polish pope in the history of the Catholic Church. Um, I, I saw him when he came to Philly. I was in second grade. Oh, uh, that's he awesome. He drove past us in the Pope Mobile doing about 45 miles per hour yes. down the parkway. That's but I, I can actually say I've seen a Pope. That's awesome. <laughs> and the Twitterverse is about to explode for sure. <laughs> we should probably try to get one with Mags. Here, I'll get the two of you here in a second. <laughs> Well, I'm going to sign off because it's the end of the end of the quarter. I should get down and help out Mr. Claus. So it's been fun. Thanks, Mr. Sorokin. You're awesome. welcome. Anytime. I'll tell you what. Uh, if in fact we hold on to win this, I think I may come up next week. Too. Yeah. This well, you cool. know what? Maybe we'll maybe we'll get both of these things. We can actually hear each That's other. That's right. That's right. And engage all this in the time. Would be great if but I've been saying that for 12 years. <laughs> you know, this is the third. This is a third different person in charge of the sound stuff, and 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 you know, the, the sound, the the headphones have been about the same. So this isn't on Mags. Maybe she should sell some magnets. There's, there's nothing Mags can do that's bad. So that. Mags is like the the savior of the Interboro. Um, oh God, that was a great seam route, and truthfully. Murtha made a little bit of a mistake. I think he tried to knock it down, and he let the guy get right by him. And if he caught it, he was gone on the first play of the second quarter. Intended for Ryan Cormus. Mags hasn't missed a game yet since she started. Yeah, really. <laughs> I actually had a kid ask for a pride buck today. And it, like, yeah, like he wiped the cafeteria table down after I kind of asked him to. He goes, do I get a pride buck for that? So uh, the, the, the moral of the story there is that the program is working. 
So the next time he does anything even remotely nice, I'm going to give him a pride buck. Like if he just says hi to me in the hallway, I'll probably give him a pride buck. But it, first down for PJP. Because truthfully, he held the door open for me three days ago. The same kid. I won't mention him by name. Oh, we're getting in here. All right. We're, we're going to be all over the place. If Ryan Johnson retweets the picture of me, I will. It'll make my day. Oh, the Bucks Army. I actually haven't really been on Twitter that much today. I went home and iced my ailing uh, injury. What's that? Can't you, uh, what's it called, um, edit? Hit the, you just can't hashtag no filter if you edit it. De Laurentiis on the draw and sealed up nicely. And senior captain Frangelli with the stop and Zizza was also there. So second and 11, ball on the 46 yard line. Pope John Paul looking to get back in the game. Looks like we are gonna have a halftime show, which is great news. And a pass a little bit high, intended for Cormos again. And that's Kuyate on the coverage. Third down and 11 from the 46. 11.05 to go, quarter number two. Bucks holding 21. Five wide. Picked off. Intercepted on the play. And all the way down the sideline, down to the 20. So Mr. Mac Mullen with the interception. And great field position again. Take care, Mr. Barrett. So that was Joe Barrett, everybody. And I can assure you, if it's around Interboro and there's a camera nearby, Joe Barrett's going to be there. 26 yard line, the line of scrimmage. And boy, it's quite possible that thing we talked about earlier, uh, Mags, is going to happen. Hand off to Thomas. Inside the 20. So you're officially Katie Malkovich now, or whatever your name is. I can't, something like that. Oh, it's a bonus? Okay, yeah. Mirtha, looking for a man to throw to. Both well covered, Mirtha's gonna have to run it. Mirtha picks up a nice block downfield. Nice cutback block by Forte. Real great awareness to come back and, and pick somebody up and also to stay in front of them and not commit a penalty. So, good job by Forte. And they end up getting the first down. as both downfield receivers were covered nicely by Pope John Paul defenders. And Mirtha wise to not try to force it. And Pope John Paul jumps off sides. And So now it'll be second or first and five from the 13 yard line. And 
at some point the head of District 1, Mike Barber, is going to phone in and I'm going to tell him how great this new playoff system is working. Chris Thomas up the middle, touchdown, and it'll be 27-0, pending the extra point. So Thomas with his second touchdown. And Ravert will line it up for the extra point. We have 10.05 to go in quarter number two. And the Bucks with a four touchdown lead. Good snap, good hold. The kick is up and it's good. No good. No good. And that is par for the course. But we'll try and keep it light and keep it interesting to keep our ratings up. But I'll do my very best to get, you know, keep you as engaged as possible here on the broadcast. Pretty decent crowd down there in the administration corner. All four principals as well as uh, athletic director, assistant athletic director, uh, Joe Barrett. I have to make sure I uh, delineate between assistant and regular, I think. So, Mr. Kloss, the athletic director, as well as an assistant principal. Assistant principal, Sean Conti. Assistant principal, Ryan Snyder. The head guy, Mr. Ryan Johnston. And Mr. Mr. Um, Chavone from the school board is down there as well with ringside seats. Good to see Justin Chavone. He's really, truthfully, one of, to me, one of those people that I think when it's all said and done is going to be a first ballot Interborough Hall of Famer. He represented us well as a student when he was here. Went on to Millersville, got his teaching degree. I still wish we could bring him into our department, but uh, he seems to be happy teaching at Chichester and serving on our school board here. Uh, but just one of those truly great people. He loves kids. He loves history. He loves school. Uh, just got married um, last spring. I was lucky enough to be uh, invi invited and involved in his wedding. And uh, really, truthfully, one of the, you know, the real points of light in this district is Justin Chavon. And I'm not just saying that because he's technically my boss because um, I don't even think of him that way because he was one of my students at one point. And now a squib kick by Interborough, and they fall on top of it. Connor Adams goes on top, and the old up 28 onside kick. Hey, man, whatever works. 40-yard line, the line of scrimmage, and they caught PJP napping. And Interborough right back on it. So with 9.54 to go, Bucks up 27 nothing. Ball again. Murtha, the quarterback, Forte and Thomas. The running backs. Adams, the lone wide receiver. And I figure they might throw here. Murtha steps up in the pocket nicely. Launches one to Adams, who brings it in for the touchdown. Connor Adams. That flag's going to be on the PJP defender, and Adams beat him clean. And I'm going to tell you, Nate Murtha on that play really showed me something as a quarterback. He did two things awesome on that play. One is he sensed the backside pressure, and he had the awareness to step up in the pocket. Two, he noticed that Connor Adams adjusted his route and cut inside, and he adjusted his throw as well. That was a real just grown-up play by Nate Murtha, who really is evolving as a quarterback. 
and has done a lot of great things. Um, good job, Nate. And it'll be 34-0, the drive of one play, 40 yards, and a touchdown, so 34 nothing. The hands-on hips for PJP, which is certainly understandable. Kuyate looking to make it 35, and it is. 35 nothing. It was 33 nothing. The two-point conversion makes it 35, and that number is significant because should it remain 35 points or above, it will run the clock in the second half. Oh, Ryan Dowdy brings down McCaffrey at the 20 yard line and PJP really looking to get something going here. Down 35. And they'll get a hold of De Laurentiis and they'll bring him down. Colin Ravert. Aunt Zizza. Looks like Frangeli in there. Everybody in on the sack party. Seven yards loss. And really we're at a point where just nothing going right for Pope John Paul. And there's a lot of football left to be played, at least a lot of time on the clock. De Laurentiis, and I think they're going to call that an incomplete pass, although I thought for a second, too, that could have been a lateral, but it was a forward pass, and it was just incomplete. Five wide. De Laurentiis, pressure from Obesame. De Laurentiis goes outside. He might have to run it. No, he throws it. It's intercepted. Intercepted by Interborough. Looks like McMullen again. And he read it beautifully. And that's exactly the same type of interception where he just jumped the route. And Mr. McMullen with his second interception and gives Interborough field position at the 10 yard line.
And I, I really thought that the play there, if you're De Laurentiis, is probably to just tuck it and run instead of force it to throw. Thomas. We get about four stacked up at the seven yard line, six yard line maybe. And now really the question is, can Mike DiOrio get in there for a touchdown? If he's, I don't even know if he's cleared. He might, no he's not. You know what, he's not even in uniform. Well he's in uniform, but he's in sweatpants. So he must not be cleared. As all the kids with concussions are over there at the uh, training table. I really thought tonight would be the night they could get DiOrio in there for a touchdown, but or maybe not. So six yard line, second down and goal from the six. Thomas again, he'll cut. He, and a great job by Chris Thomas. Leaves a man in his wake and gets into the end zone and not known for his finesse as Chris Thomas, but he got in that time with a nice cut. And 41 nothing the score. Tell you one group of people who might not like this score is the cheerleaders who have to do kicks. 42 kicks is going to be a tall order. And there's like a lot of time left before, you know, like, like basically the way, you know, games like this work is it's kind of like anything that you score in the first half is fair game. So Interbury may even punch another couple in. You know, obviously you're not going to see Mirth and the rest of the starting unit in there in the second half. At least you wouldn't think um, with, you know, they're already up six touchdowns uh, and with maybe time to tack on a few more. Um, but they'll keep playing hard, you know, at least until halftime you would think. And then um, But these guys beat Pottsgrove. I, and I, that's the thing I have a tough time wrapping my head around. So either better days, you know, are, are behind the Pope John Paul team, or maybe Pottsgrove's just a little down this year. I don't, I don't know. I mean, next week is a different week, and who knows what will happen. But my gosh. Kick deep, received at about the 15. And Connor Adams and the crew wrestle him down to 24. Dowdy also in, his second straight special teams tackle. And all, all the folks from Pope John Paul's football team could do is just keep on, you know, keep on throwing it, keep on chucking it. Hopefully they're able, something will connect and they'll have a little something positive maybe to go into the half with, but it just hasn't happened yet. And, you know, Interboro went into this game as a huge favorite. Five wide, and De Laurentiis will run it, and he'll get the first down, and then some, about the 17-yard run up to the 42. And truthfully, you know, if... That may be the play. That may be what they have to do, is just spread it out and work the middle. Beckwith, who is sort of the, uh, the hero of the last game against Academy Park, the last game we broadcast anyway, haven't called his name much in this contest. Underneath pass, McCaffrey to the 50, 
close to first down, but not. So second down and two right at midfield. And the Borough Band getting those lightsabers ready. Once again, quarterback draw for the first down ball on the ground. I think Pope John Paul got a lucky bounce there, their first of the game. And honestly, if that ball bounces up into the hands of Connor Adams, he takes that back for six more. They were fortunate to have one of their offensive players fall on top of it. So five wide again, no huddle. And they'll run a wide receiver screen and they'll get nothing. And Dan Call, who senior doesn't get a, a great deal of playing time, so it's good to see him out there and get a nice stick. but a very likable, nice young man, very respectful, comes from a good family. Known them for a long time. PJP, definitely their best drive. Screen to McCaffrey, he's got a little bit of running room. Inside the 40 to the 34. That'll be close to another first down. As we'll go under five minutes in the second quarter. Third and a half a yard. Four wide with a single setback. And forward progress very well may have gotten it. I think if you're the umpire here, you spot it for a first down, and they do. Wind it up, ref. 428 and counting. 33 and a half, 34 yard line, the line of scrimmage. Pope John really putting it together in this drive. Uh, and I think a little bit more creative. And I don't even want to say creative, but I think what you would call more appropriate play calling for the skill set and for what Interboro is showing them. And they'll get outside for a first down. A stick made by Dowdy. And honestly, I think this is something that, you know, when they look at the film, Pope John Paul will probably say, you know, this is actually what we should have been doing from the get-go, and that's taking what the defense gives us. Spread it out, because if there's one thing that Interboro does have a tough time with is, is spread formation. And because it really allows for athletes on the other team to get open, and it forces you to have four or five guys in coverage and it opens up that middle of the field. And, you know, with, with that, um, but PJP hasn't been able to take advantage of that at all during this contest. Now you see they're stacked a little bit more in the middle and maybe they're gonna try and give them some of the outside stuff. As you can see, Chris Thomas just camped out right in the middle. and he'll come in on a blitz, and he may have called that himself, and the ball floated up, and actually a good job. And another first down for Pope John Paul, and inside, and that ball, it went to number one, Jake Bildstein. 
and they'll probably say, they'll probably drop the sticks and say first and goal from the 10. And while the ball may truly have been outside the 10, the expedient thing to do if you're an official is say first and 10. First and goal from the 10, rather. So Pope John Paul looking to make some noise. Pressure from Raver. And a wise decision by De Laurentiis to throw the ball into the ground. And the band will take off and assume their position, so we'll be treated to a wonderful halftime show, I'm sure. Three twenty-five remaining in the quarter. That looks like Superintendent Riley down there as well, as well as uh, Board President Mr. Phelps. How about it, man? We got all the heads of state here, and they all just got to see. A nice sack by Aunt Zizza. And that'll knock him back to about the 19-yard line. And there really can't be anything more demoralizing than that if you're Pope John Paul, who's had a really impressive drive. And they got to within first and goal, and now it'll be third down and goal from the 18-yard line. As D-Rock, as he tends to do sometimes, just brings the house. And, of course, referring to longtime defensive coordinator Mike D'Esposito, Interboro Hall of Famer. I'm proud to have been the, one of the people who nominated him for that honor. And uh, I was really happy when they accepted that nomination and put him in. He was good. Nobody more deserving. Chris Thomas with the sack again. And that'll take him all the way back to the 35. So it'll be fourth and goal from the 35. And Bucks are a, a prideful bunch. You know, they didn't want to give up any type of score, at least with the starters still in the game. My assumption, and this is, this is only an assumption, I don't have any intel, is that we probably won't see much of the starters in the second half. Uh, Pope John Paul will go on the offensive to begin the second half. Um, they get the ball because Interboro started the game with the ball. So five wide, three wide receivers to the far end, two to the near end, and I can only imagine they'll chuck it into the end zone here. De Laurentiis with Obesame pressure, and it's intercepted. And Shane Beckwith with an interception, he has quite a few. So it truly, you know, Beckwith probably should have knocked that down, but with a 42-0 lead, I don't think anybody's going to get in a real big twist over it. Nothing wrong with padding the stats. So Mirtha and the offense back at it with a minute 32. And we'll see what coach wants to do. He may just call a couple runs up the middle and, and that's it. Or maybe they try and punch another one in. We'll see. Forte, fullback dive, which is technically, you know, your clock killing play, but it happens to go for 32 yards. So now they're all the way up at the 48 yard line. That might change the tactics. And this could be the uh, Steve Lennox double pass, although I don't think Adams is going to throw it from there. We'll see. Now they'll go Forte again. He'll get four.
Also, big shout out Bill McLaughlin down there. Also saw math teacher Brian Peltz down there as well. So good representation from the faculty, administration, and board of directors. Uh, you know, this really is a community effort all the way around. And whether you're simple rank and file employees like Mags and I, or whether you're the heads of state, you know, we all have a, a, an interest in this game. We all are part of this, this team, this community, and we're happy to see. And we're happy to see the Bucks with a 42-0 lead at halftime. And hopefully you'll be happy to see the Bucks band at halftime. So Mags and I will take a break, have a hot dog and a Coke, and uh, we'll be back for the third quarter.
Pope John Paul, ball on the 42 yard line. Uh, Bucks holding 42. And Interboro's defensive starter is still in there, as I imagine they probably will be for at least this first drive, and then they'll take it from there and see what, um, you know, see what happens. De Laurentiis with the handoff. It goes up the middle for about four yards. And I think they probably want to just keep the keep the starters in there long enough just to make sure that the clock stay running and then they'll probably get some other kids in there with a chance to get some playoff experience. Great job by the Bucks band at halftime, um, as always. And I got to see some... Uh, some familiar faces during the half. Um, so that, that always makes coming out to the football game a good experience. De Laurentiis with the screen, and that's read very nicely by Mr. McMullen, who's having a good game on defense. It'll be third down and seven. And it looks like some of the some of the folks here at ringside probably have decided to call it an early night. It is a bit chilly, and maybe to go home and uh, you know have some soup or something, and kick back and watch some college football or you know MacGyver or something like that. Aunt Zizza with the hit at the 40, and Cormos looks like he took a shot up high, and the officials blew it dead and they probably want to have Cornos look like but he's gonna he got back up after a second and they'll uh attend to him on the sideline so fortunately you know it looks like he maybe just temporarily got his bell rung and it wasn't too much uh you know too too severe hopefully so the clock starts running it again and it'll be fourth down and about seven for PJP at the 39-yard line, looking to maintain possession. And I guess we'll really see what's going on inside the minds of Coach Lennox if they do get the ball back here. De Laurentiis is sacked by Ravert. Big stick at the 48. And with the change of possession, we'll briefly stop the clock and... Um, it's, well, Mirth is back out. So what coach generally does in situations like this where there's a huge lead at the half is one series with the starters and then the remainder of the game will be um, the twos and the threes if it gets down that far. Um, Jared Della Pascoli waiting in the wings to get some time in. Handoff goes to Forte, who doesn't get much. Thomas to the outside. Thomas will stay in bounds and then go out of bounds just before the first down marker. So it'll be th second down, one yard to go. That should be third down. Murtha with the sneak, and he'll get a first down, and he's still on his feet. Which, if, and all the way down to the 25 yard line, I think if one play encapsulates the night that Pope John Paul II's having, is that. I mean, that play is designed to get a yard and basically 
get back in the huddle and run another play. And Mirtha winds up getting 20 on it. Thomas stays on his feet inside the 15 down to the 12. And the county's leading rusher adds to that with another 14. And somebody moved there. Pope John Paul pointing to the Interboro Bucks and the refs pointing to Pope John Paul. So five yards up and it'll be one first down and five from inside the 10. First and five from the seven yard line. Bucks can get a first down without getting a touchdown. It's Forte. To the four. Formation set, Kuyate in motion. It goes to Thomas. Thomas looks to run off the tackle, and they're going to flag what I imagine is going to be a horse collar. So if nothing else, it's going to be a fresh set of downs for Interboro. I think they're calling a horse collar there. And they call it a face mask, which either either or the result is the same. And it's a first down for the Bucks. Um, so first and goal at the um, one yard line. And they run the clock and we'll go inside of six minutes early on. So we shouldn't be here much longer. Um, you know, there are, there are a few occasions where the clock stops, but by and large, um, you know, they, they run through, and these halves usually take not very long. And Mirtha takes it in for a one-yard plunge. And Bucks will go up 48 to nothing with the extra point pending. Um, so much so that the Interboro coaches decide that enough's enough up top here. And they'll get down on the field to celebrate like we can now um, – basically say is going to be Coach Steve Lennox's 300th career overall win, which is just absolutely phenomenal. Um, that's a lot of coaching years. So Mirtha the hold and Raver the kick, 49 to nothing. And I gotta tell you, Maggie, when we started coming here uh, way back in, in late August, it was really warm. And, uh, you know, I'm still wearing shorts, but it's not, not with the same comfort level that as, you know, when we were up here just in shorts and t-shirts. It's, it's definitely starting to feel like November. I mean, heck, it's playoff football. Although I guess if you look at the score here, it doesn't really necessarily reflect that, but it is. this is in fact a playoff game. This is round one with the district semifinal. 
4A District 1. And Bucks firmly in command. The Raven will kick off from the 40. And again, we'll see what the, 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 the strategy is of Coach Lennox if you know maybe we see some other guys in the game. And Raven will kick it deep and picked up at the 15 yard line finally. And Zizza with the stick and Forte with the stick at the 23. Wide receiver screen outside. So we do have some of the twos in there, joined by Connor Adams back deep. And obviously the one, you know, the, I mean, you don't want to see any kid get hurt, but the one player out there that you don't want to see get injured is Connor Adams as he plays a pivotal role. And the officials call a timeout as uh, Bildstein <laughs> Stumbles off the field. He uh, looks like he got a little banged up there, so hopefully he's okay. Wind it up, ref. 515 in county. Second down and four. They got six on that last play. Beckwith also still in there. Mr. McMullen's still in there, and Dowdy's still in there. So the secondary, what you would what you would look at as like the defensive secondary, they're still in there back deep. The interior line and linebackers, although Ravert's in there too. So I guess you know five of eleven are guys who get significant playing time with the, the number one unit. So I think part of the strategy here is let's work a couple of younger guys in, give them some playoff experience. At the same time, keep the, keep the clock running, preserve the shutout, send a message to whoever the Bucks are playing. Uh, Pottsgrove is up 14-7 at the half. Um, I don't know what that score is right now, but we'll try and find out for you. Either way, I think we'll be back here next week for the district final. And that ball should be live. They said it wasn't. That looked like a backwards pass to me. Run the clock. I don't know why they felt the need to stop the clock for a second there, but they, and the guy over there on down in distance is not doing so good either. They're going to go up and see route and Joe uh, Dan Call with the almost interception. So 33 is our line of scrimmage, is third down and 10. 250 and counting here in quarter number three. They send 21 in motion. And it's first down for Pope John Paul. They make a spin. McCaffrey inside the 40 to the 38. 
Connor Adams was with him most of the way, and I think eventually will be credited with the tackle. But across in midfield is Pope John Paul. And again, I am not exactly certain why we're stopping the clock here at any point, other than for injuries and changes of possession. And a nice ball thrown by De Laurentiis downfield to the 16 yard line is where that one will be spotted. Back with, with the stop. Sean Brennan with that catch. Give credit where credit's due there. The 17 will be the line of scrimmage. Uh, minute 33 and counting in period number three, quarter number three. Good to see Bildstein back in action and it's intercepted. Call God at that time, and again, another throw ill-advised. So Kyle will pick it off at the three-yard line, two-yard line, and looks like we might see the twos here. So hopefully Jared Della Prescoli. Actually, what Murtha might do is stay in and get him out of trouble, but no, they're going to go all the way with the twos, and Jared Dell um, will be in there to take the reins at the one-yard line, I think, is where they're going to have it marked. And, and Coach is probably telling him the most important thing is just get the snap. Just get the snap. And with the ball, obviously, Interboro can control the clock. And and leave it to the refs to uh, stop the clock, to move the ball back a half a yard. So probably time for maybe one, may, I doubt two, but probably just one play um, in the, and encroachment by Pope John Paul, I think. So we'll probably get five yards ahead. No, it's gonna be on Interboro. So now the ball will be at the one quarter yard line. So they just can't really seem to, to get right. And it's almost one of those things where you can see the shutout going away with a stupid safety because sometimes when you bring the twos in, the hardest part is just snapping the darn ball. So Jared Dell will try to fall forward for a yard or two, and it seems like he's able to do that, maybe get the ball out to like the two. And that'll be it for the third quarter. There's 16 seconds left, and they will gladly let that run off the clock and move it on down to the other end of the field. So after three, it's 49 nothing Interboro. That quarter took a grand total of 21 minutes. So. We're thinking maybe more of the same in quarter number four. And we'll kick off this um, this fourth quarter with a little Hawaii 5-0. Why not?
So we'll wind up having second down and nine from the, the spot at the two yard line. Bucks hand off out to about the seven. Bird, sophomore, number 32, he gets the carry there. So third down, and again, what, what were we stopping that clock for? I think they ran it, ran it again, but... Bird up the middle for a first down and then some up 19 yard line. That'll keep the clock for the, you know, running for the Bucks so they can control how this, uh, you know, ball game goes. And it looks like they're bringing in a completely different offensive line. So there's, with the score being so lopsided, I'm sure the crowd didn't even realize the actual offensive line was taken out. And I think probably the reason Coach did that is they just wanted to get it out of trouble on the two-yard line, so they had the big guys in there and you know not give up the safety. The center quarterback exchange would be a lot cleaner with Cameron Brooks than it would be with any other center. Um, especially with a new quarterback. So basically, you know, get out of trouble, don't give up the stupid safety, and take it from there. So now we have strictly the twos in there, which is nice to get an opportunity to play in a playoff game. And this is Bird again, and he, he won't get much, so it'll be third down and long. Under 10 to go in this one. Like Mr. McMullen with the, the carry on a sweep and he doesn't get much. He'll actually go backwards. So Mirtha is still in the game for punt team so he'll punt and actually the, you know, most of the guys who are on the special teams are still people who play um, people who you would classify as being first stringers. And Mirtha's punt will be fielded at the 43 and tripped up nicely by Bird, and he'll be given field position at the 35-yard line. 8.34 to go. Spot it and wind it. Took his good old time winding it. This referee really needs to learn how to get to expedite the game. De Laurentiis over the middle. Nice catch. Flag on the play. Uh, and it's in a spot where I think you're probably going to have a, an illegal formation. 
but they have a spot down there, so we'll, maybe they, maybe this one's on Interboro. Yeah, man downfield. So, a great catch and run. And really one of the few positives if you're Pope John Paul uh, is wiped away by a man downfield penalty. All right. Nobody want to hear Jaws. Let's play Get the Beat Down for crying out loud. Outside pressure. De Laurentiis throws it up. Man wide open. Touchdown, Pope John Paul. And they beat him clean downfield. Uh, Cormos, who really got his bell rung earlier in the, in the half, Bounced right back up and seems to be okay because he caught a touchdown. Um, a well-thrown ball by De Laurentiis. It, it was a long one, you know, 35 yards or so. So Pope John Paul gets on the scoreboard. Seven forty-five left on the clock. And they'll go for two. And incomplete. So, just said 49 to six with 7.45 to go. So they'll spot it up at the 40-yard line, and I, I, you know, who knows if they'll try, like, maybe some type of an onside kick. Um, it began the game with it, and it was an ill-advised decision. So I don't know if they're going to kick it deep or not. They might just squib it, but they, they do kick it deep and actually kick it out of bounds. So Bucks can take that up at the 40. Ref must think we're getting he's getting paid by the hour. Oh, bird stopped after about three.
And the pitch out will result in the loss of about eight yards. Is the second unit of the offensive line not able to provide really a lot of protection for Bird, who's getting crucified back there behind the line of scrimmage. off to the up man and he'll be tackled behind the line of scrimmage so fourth down And I guess Della Pascoli will punt. Seriously. So uh, timeout call to talk things over with the second team special teams with a 43 point lead. Five oh five left to play, quarter number four. And then set the punt team up correctly, which I think made a lot more sense. Della Pascoli snap up over his head, and he's gonna rugby style punt it, and a punt will go three yards. So a three yard punt for Della Pascoli, not his best effort. Officially, um, it's a two-yard punt. So, PJP will take over with 4.58 to go. Um, that'll be two yards and then two yards net, uh, no return. And the pitch out. And call with the initial hit. Down to the 16, and they'll bring him down. This time they'll go uh, pitch left. They went pitch right last time, pitch left this time. Down to about the 10.
<laughs> and a touchdown for Pope John Paul. So with 3.25 to go in this contest. Make it 49-12 with a two-point conversion. And the cheerleaders keep cheering and uh, you know maybe we can get a couple, another couple tunes out of the band. The ball floated up and actually intercepted in the end zone. So we'll wait again for the ball to get queued up at the 40 yard line. And truthfully, which one of the worst running clock exhibitions I've ever seen in my life. I know that they, they stop it after a score, I understand that. But I mean, I don't find this to be any faster than the half when they, you know, were, were scoring all the time. That one dollar a slice pizza sounds good, except for the fact that I think the only thing keeping me from Bertucci's right now is the end of this football contest. Mags, you're more than welcome to join us, but I'm sure um, you I'm sure you gotta get home, but you're more than welcome to come join. See Willie. <laughs> see, I have no desire to see my wife, none whatsoever. I, I mean, that doesn't mean I like her any less. I just, I saw her briefly during the day, and it's like, I don't really miss her or anything, you know. She, I mean, she knows where I'm at. I know where she is. I figure we'll probably see each other again. And what's going on here is, it, is they're actually telling them, like, let the clock run down as much as you can before you snap it. And the reason they're doing this is because they can't really move the ball with the twos in there. And finally, though, they're going to, because if you look where the cheerleaders are positioned, it's almost guaranteed now that they play get the beat down. Yeah, see? See? I told Brennan Malloy that it was mandatory that they played this today. I don't know what, like, the delay was, truthfully. Maybe we'll get a, you know, the, a two-minute and ten-second version of Get the Beat Down. Here we go. I don't know what just happened on the field. I got all my attention 
focused on. Get the beat down, Mags. It's third down and four. It should only be time for like, you know, one or two more plays. Gray. If this ref doesn't give him the first down, he just doesn't get it. So I'm thinking probably one more play. It might even be a kneel down, and that'll be it. And the Bucks will move on to the district final next week. So we'll be right back here bringing it to you. Special shout out to Coach Lennox for win number 300 of all time, combining his wins. And that will be it. So for Katie Mags, my name is Bill Soroka. We'll see you back here next week. Final score of 49 to 12. And congrats, coach, on number 300.